How many times have you left a debate and realized you forgot to mention a really important point of rebuttal that could have changed the adjudication in your favor? I've coached hundreds of debating students and have noticed that every debating student initially struggles with mentioning and thinking of points of rebuttal. But we're here to help solve this problem. Hi everyone, my name is Nikki and this is James and we're here to teach you about a specific type of rebuttal known as truth and importance. Now, if you want to learn about other types of rebuttal, feel free to check out our other content to learn some more. Rebuttal is an essential part of debating. It's what provides the clash of ideas. It requires debaters to listen to what the other team has said and respond to their arguments. An audience member, or more importantly, an adjudicator, might find themselves convinced by a point that the other team has said. It is vital, therefore, to always deal with the significant points that the other team might say. To do this, we're going to go through three steps of rebuttal today. Firstly, it's important to state what the other side said so the audience and the adjudicator can see what point you're refuting. It's as easy as saying, well, the first affirmative speakers stated in their first point that junk food causes obesity and therefore junk food should be banned. The second step is to argue that the other team's point might not be true or is possibly invalid. Debating requires accuracy. So it's essential that we, as debaters, lay out logically for the adjudicator why the other team's points may not be true. By highlighting the fact that the other team's points are invalid, your team's points are far more likely to be viewed as correct. For example, if I'm on the negative team and I hear the affirmative team's point saying that we should ban junk food because it causes obesity, I could state that this point is factually incorrect. Why? Because just eating one burger doesn't cause someone to be obese. What causes obesity is eating lar large amounts of fast food in excess, or even large amounts of any food in excess. Therefore, it's always important to state why a point is factually incorrect. Thirdly, consider whether the argument that the other team has raised is actually important. Maybe it's not really relevant to the debate, or perhaps it doesn't impact many people. For example, let's go back to our banned junk food topic and imagine that the affirmative team has just argued that Australia is one of the top four most obese countries in the world. If I'm on the negative team, the statement said might be true, but it's not important to the debate, as junk food is not the sole cause of the obesity rates in Australia. Rather, the lack of exercise, the high cost of fresh food compared to junk food, and the lack of nutritional advice given to parents and children could be causes of the obesity rates in Australia. Therefore, it is not important to the debate as junk food is not the sole cause of the obesity rates in Australia. Using this three-pronged approach is an excellent way to structure your rebuttal. Try it out in your next debate and let us know how it goes in the comments below. Make sure you like and subscribe to keep seeing our videos. And until then, see you next time. See ya.